Morty in progress. Of course it is. Okay. Um, I'm very delighted to welcome everybody here to the next in our uh, Mapping Ancient Africa uh, seminar series online. And um, today we're going to uh, think about African climate systems. And we have uh, with us from the University of Uppsala or Uppsala University, uh, Min Chao Wu. Um, Min Chao, over to you. Okay, so now it's, it's my turn, right? Yeah, Your thanks. Turn. You're on. Great. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, uh, everybody, and especially thanks, uh, Williams and uh, Steph, for inviting me to this talk. Uh, I'm uh, today in some very pleased to uh, share uh, some of my uh, knowledge and experience about the uh, modeling the African climate system. So, um, so I, I'm um, a climatologist. So I've been working with the climate modeling for a couple of years in my PhD. So. Um, uh, uh, in this period, I mainly focus on the interactions between biosphere and atmosphere and the, uh, in the Earth system. So what we use is the regional climate model, and then we use the observation data and also compare the model's performance. And then we also try to change or improve the uh, performance, uh, improve the process uh, to increase the performance. So uh, for today's talk, uh, I'm going to talk about briefly about the uh, the climate, uh, African climate systems, uh, and then we put the focus on the, how we model the uh, African climate, and uh, based on our previous experience and then share our knowledge, and and so uh, and also after that we have some kinds of reflections, and then hopefully we can inspire uh, uh, some of the discussions. Uh, so, so. Uh, the African climate system, I mean, the climate system is always a complicated topic. And then when uh, Will invite me, actually, I'm a bit, uh, try, try to, oh, it's a bit tough to me. Um, yeah, so uh, if the climate system is, uh, is actually, it's mainly about the climate dynamics. And when we're talking about the African climate system, um, mainly we are actually referring to the tropical climate system. Uh, why is important? Because the uh, African climate is uh, located in the uh, tropical belt, so it's actually received a lot of energy. Uh, so, so we call it the uh, African is one of the engines uh, to the Earth system because it distributes the surplus uh, heat to different parts of the world, and then. Uh, and then we have a kinds of the different uh, the temperature gradient because of the uh, in uneven distributions of the energy uh, producing the temperature uh, temperature temperature gradient and also the rotations as we controlling the seasonal cycle. So for those uh, dynamics is a fact we, we see that there's a high we produce a different kinds of the uh, uh, a high pressure system, including for Africans, we have uh, many three high systems. Subtropical highs is actually in the Arizo highs uh, in the northern uh, Africa, and also there's a high system in the southern Atlantic, as we call it the San Helena uh, highs. And another one, very important one is called the Mosqueen height in the Indian Ocean. So, because of these high systems, it dries the winds, uh, dry the trade wind to war the uh, uh, equators and then we, we can see that uh, because of the, the uh, because of the, uh, the, uh, the the scenic angle change and then we drift the uh, in, uh, it's a so-called the intertropical convergent zones ITCZ so move around and then we see the change of the ring bells also and so on. And apart from the ITC is that we also have a different kinds of the uh, climate feature including the different jet. So one of the jet is actually here to locate uh, along the uh, 30 degree north is uh, actually the subtropic. And one of the most important one is maybe is the African East Sea jet, which is where it's around the mid tropical, uh, big uh, troposphere locates around 500 millipascal. And then across from the east to the west, across uh, the northern hemisphere over almost over Sahara. So this is uh, almost the uh, overview of the climate system. So uh, we have uh, uh, the climate system is uh, why it's a complicated because it's not only the independent the component, but we also have a different very com complex interactions. So uh, for the tropic, uh, when we compare 
to the uh, mid, uh, mid latitude climate systems. I mean, the tropical system is uh, unique in, in terms of they have um, multiple interactions in multiple scales, including the uh, local scale and the meso scale interact with the larger scale. Uh, for example, the, uh, we, we, we see that the, the monsoon is uh, one of the uh, very important feature. And then it has uh, uh, is, is actually controlled by the uh, temperature gradient. And the temperature gradient is actually affected by uh, the land surface uh, property, uh, for example, the soil moisture, vegetation, and also how it evaporates, how it evaporates, it affects the temperature gradient and actually affecting the uh, the, the, the front of, of, of the of the intertropical front. So this is actually uh, uh, controlling how the monsoons uh, can move northward or so. So um, that's a, that's a still a lot can say. Maybe it's more than uh, a several lecture to, to say it clearly. But uh, actually, I just want to give you a very brief uh, overall picture and then see that yes, this is a, a climate system. We have to consider different kinds of components. And uh, so, so you will have a kinds of the general understanding of what I'm going to do, going to talk in the uh, later slides. Uh, so, so modeling uh, the climate system, uh, African climate system is a challenge task. And so we have been uh, several, uh, uh, has been several uh, large efforts previously at, uh, including the so-called the coordinating the downscaling uh, experiment. Uh, one of that is the, the Cordex Africa, the, which is very recent. Uh, the further back, we have uh, AMMA, is the African Monsoon Multidisciplinary uh, Analysis. So basically, uh, this the idea of this project is to look at um, how good our um, our models can uh, reproduce the, uh, the synotis or mesoscales features uh, of the climate. So basically the idea is that the, mod, uh, the, the project will use um, the same protocol, uh, for example, the same the resolution, same forcing data, or same time periods, and then, but uh, uh, for different uh, climate model. And then we, we, we run the model and then we compare uh, the results of the different model, and then we see what is the uncertainty of the uh, uh, climate modeling. Uh, so now um, there's a several, we, we have actually generally have a very good uh, simulations to simulating the interannual variability and also the mean, the mean cycles, but we still have uh, some challenge, including um, the seasonal cycle for some region is not so good. For example, we see that here is um, uh, the for West Africa, uh, which is the uh, where is uh, the, Mon the West African monsoon usually visit. And then here the picture here is, is generally represents how good the West African monsoons uh, simulated. And the uh, so we can see that the spread is the model. Okay, and and also uh, the blue. Uh, and the, also the uh, green is the observation based on the uh, real analysis uh, uh, data combined with the satellite data. And then we, we, we can regard this as observation. And generally we still have a large bias uh, for the onset of the rainy season uh, during the early spring. And then even though we have a very, very typically a good um, the representation of the mean, but it's still because the, uh, we have a large example of the model, which means that even though the mean, the example mean is good, but it's actually is the result of canceling out each, uh, each other of the model's buyers. I'm not sure you can see my uh, arrow, uh, William. Do you see my arrow of the- uh, Yes, mouse? yes, we can yeah. see it. Great, great, yeah. great. I'm just pointing a knob. I'm afraid that <laughs> you don't get my message there. I know it's there. Uh, great. And, and so and so, so the West African monsoon, we have such a problem. And for the Central Africa, we also have another problem is that we generally uh, underestimate the, uh, the precipitations. So this is the um, uh, observation and this is the example mean of the model. And then we, we, we consider it underestimated. Uh, in the raining season, in this peak, and also in this peak. 
So it's uh, even worse for the East Africa because East Africa is more complicated. It's not only affected by the ocean, but also affected by the, uh, the Indian Ocean in the other side. And because it's a, the topography is a very complicated. So yes, yeah, so we have a, a lot of challenges. But let's still, that it doesn't mean that our, uh, the model it doesn't work. Um, it still has uh, doing some a uh, 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 lots of good stuff uh, for some uh, circumstance. Um, uh, but but if to improve the model, uh, we we still have uh, several uh, directions. Uh, those directions related to some of the research question, including um, if the model is already includes sufficient process including if we need to include uh, the ocean dynamics uh, or the vegeta vegetation dynamics on the land surface, or how about the land use and also the aerosols. The aerosol is also one of the very important part. Uh, it's also, uh, it's, the, it's still in the earliest stage of the development in the modern world. <clears throat> another, another direction is, okay, given that we have uh, uh, the existing model uh, process, but we want to uh, uh, make it uh, more simplified. We, we can actually parameterize what the thing, uh, the thing we have seen. Uh, and also is another suggestion is to, if we can increase the resolution, for example, uh, is, is the increasing the resolutions can solve the scale problems. Uh, small scale problems uh, probably need the higher resolution, for example, the uh, ethical variance, the, 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 the cyclones, the, the, they need to have a, a higher resolution to, to resolve those, uh, those, those change. So one of the example is that uh, for, the process, for the process expert, uh, for example, if we mix uh, the vegetation dynamic, that could be maybe a problem. Here is the uh, Junior Coast. Uh, I think you can see clearly the picture is a bit uh, small, but you can see that the cloud distribution is actually mainly following the uh, vegetation cover. So without vegetations, actually, for some of the deserts or the semi area, there's almost no cloud. But because of the vegetation here, and then they, they can uh, have uh, evapotranspiration and also it's easy to form a cloud. So it's, it's easy to imagine that if we, wish, we miss this uh, process, uh, the, we will have a problem in the connections. We may probably underestimate the connections and uh, could, could lead to maybe underestimate the precipitation. So this is another uh, example is to show that how, uh, how the uh, mesoscale uh, phenomenon is uh, important to the uh, climate. And also if we cannot resolve, for example, the uh, AEW, uh, the African easterly wave, we probably underestimate or we cannot assimilate uh, the position of the monsoon correctly. So, uh, so now uh, I'm going to talk about um, the, uh, the previous effort. So uh, that could help to understand the African climate systems. And so now we mainly uh, in the following slides, I'm going to talk about some of the efforts related to how we improve the process, uh, which is from the perspectives of land atmospheric interaction. So um, uh, the process is important, not because uh, is not because it's only for improving the uh, performance for the present days, but it also helped us to understand how uh, it changed in the future. For example, for the uh, vegetations, this is the remote sensing data, uh, capture the change of the phenology in the past uh, two decades maybe. And then we see that actually there's a very obvious uh, greening trends over the Africa, uh, mainly in the Sahel region and also part of the subtropic region. And also there's a very pronounced effect over the Central Africa, probably due to the extreme climate. So this is one of the uh, challenge if we still use the prescribed uh, static, uh, static uh, uh, land surface. Uh, so one of our efforts is to uh, use the uh, couple model. So we consider the vegetation dynamics and we um, couple the model uh, through the ways of the fooling coupling. When the model 
uh, climate model feed the climate data, climate signals to the vegetation and the vegetation growth, and then feedback uh, those land surface uh, information to the uh, MSB components. So it's kind of fully coupled. So because of this um, approach, we can see how important of the vegetation dynamics that can affect uh, the climate system. And uh, so, so, which means that if we do not include this uh, vegetation dynamics, probably we will have uh, overestimates or underestimates of the climate variable or feature uh, in the system. So this is the uh, picture showing uh, when we include the vegetation dynamics, how we affect the precipitation uh, in the, under the uh, future climate change uh, context. So uh, in the future, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, well known that uh, we will have uh, elevated CO2 concentration in the future. Probably we'll go high up to uh, more than 800 millimeters, uh, 800 uh, ppm so in, the, in, the, in, the, in the future. It depends on the uh, scenario. So now this is RCP 8.5. So we'll see the vegetation will extend to the uh, Sahara, uh, Sahara, uh, Sahara regions and also the subtropics because of the so-called uh, uh, CO2 fertilization effect. So given that we have uh, vegetation increase, uh, the vegetation we can evaporate more because there's a more tree and then can suck the waters into the uh, atmosphere. And then it can have a cooling effect, lowering down the temperature. And then if we low down the temperature, it's actually, uh, we will decrease the lens of the contrast because we know that the Africa is a very warm continent. And then uh, usually, uh, and, and then the ocean is, is a cooler. So why we monsoon work is because we have, uh, we have uh, high pressures uh, from, from, from the oceans and then we drive the, uh, the trade winds uh, toward the continent. So now we decrease the contrast, which means that we, we decrease the uh, pressure gradient and then we actually decrease the wind flow, uh, thus uh, decrease the, mo uh, so, uh, the, uh, the moisture inflow to the continent and precipitation, therefore. So this is uh, one of the um, examples to showing that how important of the uh, or this uh, lens of the components to the climate system. So uh, so this is uh, another another question is, uh, is is direction is how we improve the prioritization without touching up on the process. Uh, as we know, the resolution if we have a higher resolution or finer resolution, uh, actually we may need to uh, par parameterize the process uh, in a less extent because, because um, so when we go up to the uh, uh, final scale, and then which means that a lot of the phenomenon can be, can be resolved uh, based on the numerical simulations. And if we have a cost of resolutions, which means that a lot of processes have become a statistical uh, a parameter. So we need to reparameterize that. So it's actually the trade-off between the resolution and the parameters. If we have a, have a high resolution, we need to less the parameters uh, to some extent. So, uh, so this is uh, one of the study. Uh, it's also the, the study that uh, in the advertisements is uh, talking about, okay, the impact of the resolution, how that works, how that will affect our climate model. So we have done some uh, study uh, in, uh, uh, SMHI, uh, the Swedish Meteorological and uh, Hydrological Institute. And then we, we actually based on the idea of that, we, we need to understand um, to what extent we can resolve such kind of small scale feature. And then what is the best balance to uh, for the uh, African's contest? What is the best balance? What is the best resolutions to, 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 to do that? Of course, you can have a very high resolution if you don't care about the computations. Uh, efficiency, and then you can always go to very, very high resolution, but maybe it's not necessary. For example, this, feature, this uh, figure is showing um, how the relationship between the uh, synoptics component or the climate system components we, uh, and the scales, the dependency. So we see that uh, uh, from a very small uh, climate feature, or for example, uh, the turbulent, turbulent flux, we need a very, very high resolution, maybe probably in, in a meters or so. And, um, and then if we want to uh, simulate a tornado, for example, or a thunderstorm, we need to have to, at the scales of the kilometers, 
or a 10 kilometer to resolve this, uh, this uh, climate uh, phenomenon. And, but if we only focus on the large scale dynamic, uh, the ansos or the uh, planetary rays, Rossi B wave, and then probably the scales of this is already enough. So uh, previously, we mainly focus, uh, is, for example, in IPCC, uh, before IPCC, uh, AR4 also, a lot of the study focus on uh, the GCM. So GCM is a, at a very coarse resolution here. We have, uh, it's almost coarser than uh, 100 kilometers. Now is uh, 100 kilometers kilometers for AR6 is, uh, is almost uh, also a high resolution, but most of the models is around 200 or so. And then for those models, they only can resolve the simulated uh, feature. So for the meso scale feature, they have to uh, prioritize that. So RCM, now we are, have uh, downscaling. We based on the uh, GCMs, the providing the large scale forcing. And then we want to see a higher resolution and then we go to the downscaling approach with the RCM. Uh, the RCM here is the regional climate model. And then we can resolve the uh, phenomenon at um, like tens to uh, 80 kilometers also. So if we want to go deeper, if we want to know the extreme event, for example, the hail, the heat wave also, so the convective permitting model is needed. So in such, in such a way that, so the, uh, the research is that uh, we focus on the RCM and then for the African climate, uh, most of the phenomenon is actually uh, in the meso scales uh, and the meso scales, but convection is already, is, is very important as we seen in, in, in the previous slide. So this is why some studies already go to the CPM. The CPM is, is already, is, is becoming more and more uh, uh, necessary actually. Uh, especially for the tropics. Uh, but uh, for this study, we focus on RCM. Uh, we will talk about little about the CPM later. And then the RCM, uh, to, to, uh, for uh, addressing this research question, we uh, use uh, diff uh, three different models, actually, with resolution ranging from the 0.22 to 1.76 degree. And uh, by comparing the results from a different resolution, resolutions, uh, for example, we can uh, comparing the same model with uh, different resolution, and then we can see, we can attribute the resolution effect. Um, similarly, we can compare uh, the same resolutions, uh, different model at the same resolution, and then we can isolate the model effect. Basically, is the model effect uh, here referring to uh, the model structure, model formulations. Uh, even though we want to simulate one common uh, uh, climate feature, but usually people can have a different idea, different physical formulation equation. So this is also another thing to introduce uncertainty or bias. So we have a different source of bias. So in by doing that, we can I isolate different kinds of bias. So, so now this is the, uh, the result that I uh, uh, present in the paper is about how that um, the uh, increasing resolution can help uh, improving the uh, simulated uh, climate variable or climate uh, phenomena. So this is the precipitation for uh, West Africa. And then this is the uh, seasonal cycle of the uh, precipitation. And then we see this is the observations uh, from the area interim and also the CP7, uh, GPCC7. Uh, it's, it's a very good that the area interim is uh, generally agree with the GPCC, uh, which, is, uh, which is good. And then which means that the observation uncertainty is not that uh, big. And then we can trust observation uh, better. But when we compare the model, the model actually generally presents um, a strong bias uh, in the um, raining season onset. Um, and actually this is uh, the similar, uh, it's a similar findings as the previous the study uh, in our previous slide. It had uh, uh, two strong uh, bias here. And then it's a similar for different version of the model and also for uh, other model. For example, this is also have a very strong early season onset. 
but at the same time, we in the peak of the, the rainy season, they also uh, considerably underestimate uh, the, rain, uh, the, the rainfall. So when we increase the model resolutions, this is the cost resolution uh, to the high resolution, the blue line, is actually can reduce such kinds of bias and at the same time correct some of the bias in the peak screen season, uh, rainy season. So this is very good, very good to see that. And when we uh, compare this, uh, look at the spatial patterns, we also see a similar thing. So not only for the West Africa, so West Africa is on something here. So when we also look at the uh, uh, Congo Basin or the Northern uh, Africa, it's actually the virus is decreasing. Uh, why is that? It's because probably it's because uh, the higher resolution can simulate the AEJ better. Uh, simulates the uh, uh, the position of the AEJ letters because they they rely on the resolving the the the, the edits or the turbulence for this area. And but even though we have such kinds of improvement, but at the same time, it's a bit um, uh, it, it reviewing is that uh, the the structure or the patterns of the virus doesn't change that much. Uh, for example, is is still we 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 cannot totally reduce or uh, remove the virus here. We're still there, but just the less extent of the virus. So here is the uh, is the um, implication of the rows of the resolution and also the uh, the model formulations. Here we can see that actually the model formulation has the primary controls over many aspects of the presentations uh, in Africa. So this is one of the example. Another example is even more uh, off uh, or easy to uh, illustrate is that this is a, a, a diurnal cycle of the precipitation. So it's the same, this is the observation and this is the observation have a, have a large, very large uh, difference between the ERA interim and the TRMM. Uh, so people will actually, but, but be, uh, be careful is that the uh, area entering is also kinds of a model. So maybe people will trust the TRMM better, uh, but it's still uh, some people, we, uh, some study report that TRMM has such kinds of shift of the diurnal cycle because of the delays of the uh, detection from the satellites. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, it's actually this observed diurnal cycle is something like that, it's, 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 it's still, even though they have some kind of bias. But okay, when we uh, compare with the model, uh, no matter what kinds of the resolution, it's still actually the same, almost the same. Uh, the pattern is almost the same and the magnetic theory doesn't differ that much. So this is the one of the model, this is one of the model, this is another model. And this model, this, uh, this is a two version of the model, this is a totally different model. And then when the model is a totally different, the dino cycle is also totally different or almost totally different. So this is one of another implication is that the model formulation is actually control a lot of things. So uh, even though you increase the resolution, sometimes it doesn't help that much. Uh, so, uh, so this is, okay, so this is another example. So, um, so how about if we increase, improve the process? Um, so this is the, another example is how increased, uh, improve the process can help. Uh, this is the dan uh, the um, dano cycle of the simulated precipitation for the Victoria Lake. So this is the lake, and this is the other land. So it's a very very uh, it's a not uh, it's a, even though it's a very looks like a very small domain, but because in our latest uh, simulation we have a very very high resolution. So this is why we can only focus on such kinds of small domains because the computation time is a very very large. Um, so here is the observation is around 25 kilometer resolution, uh, also from TIMM. So we can see that uh, for the lake is actually the peak times of the of the precipitation during the day is uh, usually in the morning, and then for the land here the peak time is either in the mid light. So this pattern is uh, is the most uh, we can regard this as observation, but for the cost resolution, also the same, almost the same uh, resolution of the observation, 
is the 25, 25 uh, kilometer. And then is the picture is a very, very different. And even though we increase the resolution to 12 kilometer, it doesn't help that much. But if we change the uh, conversion scheme, which is a, is a totally uh, conversion permitting, it's a very process-based uh, uh, conversion scheme. And then the picture is a very similar to the observation. So it's a once again to tell, tell us that the process uh, for some phenomena, we have to improve the process uh, instead of only increasing the resolution. So main message, uh, I think almost, yeah, the time is here. So, so main message is here, uh, we, we, I mean, the process and their interactions is quite complex for African climate system. And uh, there's a different circulation components and also their interactions. It's uh, usually very complicated for the tropical regions uh, because they uh, interacted uh, at the multiple scale. So it's a very complicated. So if we want to improve the model performance, uh, I think is is uh, based on based on the the current uh, knowledge is that it's more effective to improve model formulation than just increasing the model resolution. But it depends on uh, the context. If, uh, for example, if the error bias is controlled by, for example, topography, you can increase the resolution. But for some uh, certain uh, phenomena or physical process like convections, it doesn't help that much if you even increase, only increase the resolution. And also in, improving resolution also have a problem of that you may need to reparameterize uh, the, 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 <coughs> the process. So uh, improving model process is critical uh, to extend our understanding. This is why we, we think that it's more, it's more fundamental as complete understanding uh, to, to improve the process. Because if we go to other uh, temporal scales, for example, the uh, paleoclimate scales or the future climate change scales, uh, only relying on the parameterizations maybe have their limit. So uh, next step, uh, next step is that based on our understanding, we um, actually propose to improve the process. And we luckily get the funding from the Swedish National Space Agency and it will be a three years project. So the idea is to use the remote sensing data to improve the land surface process, including the evapotranspiration uh, phenology and also the albedo. So, so what we want to see is to uh, how to improve the vegetation dynamic, which is also very important to the uh, local, uh, local social activity, but, and also uh, it's also good to see the improvement of the monsoon systems, uh, which is a very important uh, uh, under climate change. So this is, uh, we can combine the very high resolution, the remote sensing data from Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-3. And uh, this is the, uh, the, the, the latest or the, the, the latest uh, satellite data uh, from the SS. And uh, we also, uh, have uh, developed some kinds of the uh, 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 vegetation index called PPI, uh, phenologist, uh, plant phenology index, which is the improved index can capture the phenology ex uh, change, abrupt change for some species. So uh, we also have the flux tower data. And uh, so the idea is to try to compare the flux towers uh, dynamics uh, with the remote sensing data, and then we use uh, such kinds of the relationship to upscale the the, uh, the the process, and then upscale and then to improve improve our understandings in the physical equations, and then we put these equations to the land surface model, and then we put it to our regional climate model, and then we see how it works, how if we can uh, have a better performance uh, for simulating the African climate system. So thank you so much for today's. Uh, so um, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to answer any questions and hopefully we have, uh, uh, can, can, uh, can inspire some of the interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Min Chao. That was uh, really uh, a nice, nice talk. And I've got a whole bunch of questions and thoughts that have popped through my head whilst I've listened to that. But um, I will open the floor first to, uh, 
to anybody out there, either uh, shout out or put up a virtual hand and, um, and ask questions to Min Chao. Dun, dun, dun. If not, I, sh I shall ask Min Chao questions. Um, so, um, first question was about uh, <laughs> which which one to start with. Um, you mentioned the role of um, vegetation, and obviously this is where your research is taking you into these vegetation feedbacks. And you mentioned at one point the uh, the role of CO two fertilization on the forests, driving the the increasing cover of uh, of that vegetation. What happens if you take the CO2 fertilization effect out, do you still grow those forests with the climatic change or does that not happen? Uh, we actually have a similar task here. So, um, so if we take out the CO2, uh, the picture will look like this. I mean, under the future climate change. Yeah. You see my scrolling down the paper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here. So for Africa, uh, under RCP 8.5, and this is the climate effect only. So we actually have a browning, okay. likely, for, for the West Africa monsoon region, and also for some of the tropical, uh, subtropical region. Really? Why? Yeah. Why, why, do, why do you think that is? Yeah. Why is that is? Is is likely? I mean, the precipitation change in the future is quite um, uncertain. First of all, but there's one certain is the um, uh, seasonal uh, season uh, seasonal cycle as uh, the seasonality mm -hmm. is become more extreme. Yeah. So, which means that you have uh, longer drought, uh, dry seasons, yeah. or maybe higher. Uh, precipitation during the rainy season, and then even though you have the same um, mean precipitation, but still the seasonality is a, is a larger. So, so we'd be detrimental to the to the to the vegetation actually. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because we're work we're thinking about these dynamics looking backwards in time at the moment, and um, one of the things that coming out is that CO two doesn't have any effect on growing the forests in the past. So there's that we can't get any relationship between the vegetation and the CO2 looking backwards in time. And uh -huh. the what we think is the the sort of reasoning for this relates to yeah both seasonality and um particularly fires. So if you burn a landscape to pieces, it doesn't matter how much CO2 is in the landscape in the in the atmosphere, you can't grow a forest. Um, because yeah, trees that burn don't grow. Um, so uh, I think, yeah, I think it's really interesting that if you take that CO2 effect out, then then you don't, just based on the seasonal, because you don't have fire in this model, right? Uh, we, we have, uh, uh, I mean, at that time, it's a bit a simple fire model. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not, it's, it's still not that realistic at that time. Okay, but it's in there. That's interesting. Uh, we, we have an upgraded fire model already. Okay, cool. So, oh, that's even more interesting. So that fits basically exactly what we would. Well, yeah, without the CO two fertilization effect. So you're, yeah, Ooh, interesting, cool. But but so so I I'm very interesting for to, to your observation. So you didn't see the close relationship between the CO two elevation elevated concentration and the vegetation growth, right? In the yeah. paleo record. Yep. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool. Is this any 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 published? It's it, 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 it's in review again. Uh, so, okay. Uh, yeah, hopefully soon. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Not wishing to give too much away. Uh, other questions? I see Lynn there. Lynn, yeah, put you on the spot. I don't have any questions, Will. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. I put my video on. <laughs> like, it's nice to see fat smiley faces. That's cool. <laughs> but very cool talk. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, other questions? Um, yeah. 
No, I don't have a glass. Um, cool. Other, any other questions? Well, my other question. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dominate this then. Um, if I, if I have the opportunity, um, is you talked a lot about the, the, the sort of downscaling in space and, and, and doing the stuff around the, the Lake Victoria was very interesting to see. Now, a lot of the people in this room work on paleoecological sites where they have specific lakes and they think about like reconstructing the climate around that particular lake. How plausible or realistic is it to take a lake, say one where we have a long paleoclimate record, simulate the climate there using like the modern parameters, but then change the processes, change the vegetation cover based on paleoecological records and then run your models again. So rather than like trying to match it to the modern, could we could we use it to like say, okay, given this theoretical uh, regional configuration of, of vegetation or whatever we think the system would be in the past and like and look at kind of use the model to 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 reconstruct or, or see what climate climates would be predicted around lakes given scenario A, B, or C. Like, is that possible, likely, interesting to do, been done already? Like, I don't know. I didn't see I didn't see it as the anything. I mean, to my knowledge, I mean for the uh, Victoria Lakes, I didn't see it's the based on the dynamic vegetation model, no. Yeah. But, but conceptually, could you do that? Like would that be, what would you, would, would we be able to change the processes? Like, so you said like you were getting like more, yeah, processes in and around these lakes and stuff. So would, it, would it be possible to like tweak those based on what we think from the evidence from the lake it was like in the past to see whether we can, to see what comes out again? I think, I think the model need to have uh, driven by the climate. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, if we have the paleo climate around the lake, that would probably likely possible. Yeah. And um, but uh, but the lake is a very small scale, so um, mm -hmm. we also need kinds of downscalings, um, maybe a statistical downscaling, uh, at least. Uh, and then we drive the vegetation model, and then we compare the uh, the, the the pollen record also to see how how so they then match. So the key would be to like drive the, so for example, if we're thinking about like the stuff we've been thinking about with Stephanie and the ENSO model. So we change the ENSO configuration, which alters your climate and then downscale to see what the impact is at a particular site. Yeah. You could, you could do that. You can play those sort of games. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and, and also it depends, uh, what is the temporal scale? I mean, how long? Uh, yeah, good, good question. So we've been playing with this on the timescales of like um, a million years down to a few thousand years so far. So like Holocene timescales or um, yeah, million years timescales, but you can, because that's where we can resolve our paleoecological data at. Um, in certain situations, we might be able to get higher resolution, but we're certainly not thinking about, yeah, within a year or anything like that. We're talking about yeah, centennial to millennial at very highest resolution um, at, at a few sites, but something that's operating on, yeah, shifting ENSO, dominant ENSO states rather than like ENSO events would be, is kind of more what we're thinking about. Yeah. If that makes any sense. I don't know if definitely you want to chip in there. No, I'm, I'm pretty much wondering about this too, because we, we since we cannot resolve um, singular ENSO events. So even if you take a certain ENSO event out of the historical record right now or predicted for the future, it's still very difficult because we can't resolve something like that in the past one way or the other. We can only see that there is a higher tendency to have one mode dominating the other. And then we just kind of like thinking about blocking, like in, in terms yeah. of blocks, like it's more that mode than that mode, but it's really difficult. Strikes out, it's nearly impossible with some, most of the data to really go into individual events because yes, we, we don't have the resolution for that. We just don't. Yeah. The yeah. 
wouldn't it be interesting anyway to just look at time slices and see in the different periods what might be going on and and maybe play about with the vegetation and see whether certain vegetations are will survive or won't survive could still be interesting to do that and you know just just do a few years to at high resolution to, to, to test things like that. So sort of put it like a kind of scenario into the model where you run it under a certain set of climate conditions or a certain like you up the ENSO frequency or then like you change the vegetation to this and then just see see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so you're going into a different states. So you haven't really got a good initial condition, but you could say, suppose the vegetation was this, is it consistent or is it just going to die? <laughs> yeah, could you crash it or yeah. not? Oh, is this vegetation consistent with that climate? And just because um, you'd be starting, you'd be trying to solve the climate for some different orbital configuration and you'd have different ice configuration or maybe no ice. And you just run it and see what what African climate you would get, um, but you'd probably you might be imposing the vegetation, and it may or may not um, like it. <laughs> <laughs> but you could do something like that. Mincha, you could do something like that, couldn't you? That would be plausible, presumably. I I think I think yeah. I capture some of the time slides and then run the model. I, it's, yeah. It, it's, it, we have done that actually for some uh, paleo climate for for Europe, for example. And uh, I'm not sure there's one one some of colleagues running for on, on China. Is yeah, the, using the model. But uh, I think I I can only see that that could be possible if you're running. I mean, if you reconstruct the climate for a certain period, mm. and then run the model the model can maybe run every several uh, several decades uh, also and then yeah computationally uh, from the perspective of computation times could be feasible and actually someone have done that yeah but the detail i i need to uh do some investigation <laughs> yeah but but in principle if if we gave you a sort of theoretical climate configuration uh see manu um uh theoretical climate configuration for a time in the past like said like it should be set up like this based on our evidence from from the marine cores or from the paleo ecological data or whatever and then you could run it and see and see what happened for for different regions or for across the whole continent or yeah or whatever scale would be interesting yeah so, yeah i think for this it would be really that would be really cool to do if we could yeah if potentially a whole whole new project there uh <laughs> to, to, to think about but like um yeah might be might be kind of interesting to to really um yeah put that together but but, but uh, just just the question so for if those are uh, reconstructed climate is actually already uh available right or wow. we could think about it like, I mean, I think part of, part of, part of what we're trying to do is to, is to think about how these climate systems function and, and what different configurations they might have been in in the past. Like, so what were those different, different states and what were those regional effects? So we could come up with like hypothetical different climate states for, I don't know. I, I have a question because uh, in CIMIC 6, uh, in CIMIC 5 and CIMIC 6, they already have kinds of the paleo MIP. I'm not sure how useful for those data. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how much there is. Yeah. But this is further seen... back, isn't it? I mean, they did, well, they probably don't go that far back, do they, even the paleo map? I don't know, to be honest with you. Hmm. Look at it. Hmm. Yeah, so it's, it should be a global one. But yeah, you know, it's a, it's yeah. a GCM, it's a global model. So mm -hmm. uh, there may be some. And also, it's a very coarse resolution for those MIP. Yeah, that'd be coarser than, um, yeah, coarser than um, the um, 
the AR6 that you were talking about, yeah. Yeah, I'm... Uh... What are the ends? I mean, you talked about the monsoon and how well the monsoon was simulated. How well is the Enzo cycle simulated in the same models? Do they get a reasonable frequency for Enzo? It's, it's actually, it's a regional model. So actually they basically following the uh, GCM forcing. So the oh, GCM okay. can capture that, you can capture that. And do the GCMs get a decent Enzo cycle? And it's so you can choose any kinds of GCM. So, okay. yes, you can even use uh, error interim to drive the model. Okay, so you use one that's got a good side. No. Okay. Cool. Uh, good. We lost a few people. We're getting towards um, towards six o'clock here and uh, in the various different time zones that we're in. Who knows what time it is with you? At least I didn't mess that up this week. <laughs> um, so uh, are there any other questions? We've got like, yeah, two or three minutes. We could probably do one more uh, last question if anyone's got anything uh, for Min Chow. And it's a trivial question. What actually is the domain for your RCM on Africa? You mean, you mean the, the name of the RCM? The domain. Uh, the, the domain. The domain, the domain is called. Slide. Is that what you said on the first slide? Uh, domain. Okay. Let me see the. You mean which one? Is the because we have a two, but the I mean for Africa we have a very standard domain here. Oh, you mean here the first slide? That one, yeah. One. Is it that? Is that what you're simulating? Yeah. Yes. Yes. This is the uh, called as Africa, I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's of course they have a well defined. Yeah. Uh, the active uh, area and then the full domains and then the buffer zone and those yeah, yeah. standard defined. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much, Minjia. I think there's lots of food for so thought there. There was a request that came through on the chat is if you've got any of your publications related to this, if you could put those onto the Slack channel, any that are not uh, open access, then people would really appreciate it so they can read uh, more of your papers. Um, so uh, if you could get in there and, and, and put up anything that you think is is relevant. I think it would be kind of fun to keep uh, keep you involved with this group if we can hook you in to think about some of the ideas and uh, and, and what the potential is to, to link up these this climate modeling stuff with some of the the data and the the, the the guesstimates we have about what those climate system configurations were like in the past. So um, I'd like to yeah, we should all thank Min Chiao again. Yeah, thank you so much for everybody. So, yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. The other thing that I would just like to say uh, is is that yeah, keep thinking about um, the uh, Inqua Rome session. So the plan is that we will submit a session to go to Inqua Rome in uh, 2023, and the deadline for that is the end of uh, this month to suggest the session. So if people have concept papers, including Min Chao, that might be interesting to think about uh, at the um, uh, including in that proposal, uh, they don't necessarily have to be delivered in in, in full at, at, at the Congress, but uh, just to get an idea about the the range of stuff, uh, particularly ranging from the, the sort of climate paleoclimate through the paleoecology through to the archaeology side of it. If we can get a session and an idea together on that, I think we'll have a really good time, chance of getting selected, um, and and then it would actually be fun to really meet up all in person in Rome. Uh, next year, which would be, uh, which would be kind of amazing. Um, so I will, does anyone have anything to, to add on that? Probably not any burning ideas, not right now. Although I suspect you all have burning, exciting ideas. Um, so, uh, with that, I will, um, I will close off this meeting and, um, say thank you very much uh, to Min Chao and to all of you for attending. 
I will put the, the video of this onto the YouTube channel shortly and uh, where those that couldn't make it uh, can continue to see it and enjoy it. So um, thank you to everyone. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Manchao. Yeah, thank you, everybody.